This conference will now be recorded. On behalf of our Honorable Security General, Dr. G.P. Agarwal, and Dr. Sanjeev Lai, Executive Secretary Vasmi, I am Nidha Chadha, Hartley Varikun, Mr. Rajiv Suri, Partner RNA Technology and IP Attorneys, for contributing his value and valuable and precious time to make available for organizing live webinar on IP due diligence. My special thanks to Mr. Rajiv Suri for supporting Vasme in this webinar. I also welcome all the dignitaries who have taken out their valuable time to participate in this webinar. Let me brief about Vasme, a global organization having member representatives in more than 100 countries spearheading the cause and development and promotion of SMEs worldwide through policy advocacy information dissemination, conferences, seminars, events, trainings, publications, network linkages, and many more since 1980. Basme is the consultative and observer status of the United Nations. Latin is the partner with the firm RNA Technology and IP Attorneys. He heads the prosecution practice of the firm along with transactional work involving IP commercial laws. He has, intensive, he has extensive experience of more than 25 years in handling the intellectual property matters with inter include portfolio management, assisting Fortune 500 companies safeguard their IP assets. Rajiv has supervised and handled numerous oppositions, cancellation, and enforcement actions involving intellectual property issues. Rajiv is an also expert at handling commercial agreements related to foreign collaboration and joint ventures related royalty payment and licensing, licensing issue involving intellectual property. I'm not going in detail, may I invite Mr. Rajiv Suri to share his thoughts on intellectual property enforcement. Thank you so much. Handing over my to you, sir. Thank you so much, Mega, for this introduction. Um, first of all, let me thank Vasme for giving this opportunity to be here today and to present this and, and its insight into the uh, IP enforcement scenario in India. Uh, to begin with, we need to understand what exactly IP rights are. Now, perhaps you, many of you would know that IP rights talks about intellectual property rights. Now, these are the rights which are created out of one's own intellect and can be classified into further uh, various other rights. And I have shortlisted here four rights which are the main crux of IP rights. Now, these are the four rights which are primarily in every commercial venture, you will have one or the other these rights and these are the intangible assets for any com any commercial venture now these are trademarks patents designs and copyrights most of the time in fact a layman confuses between patents and trademarks or copyrights and you know and the vice versa it's like you can always differentiate it on the basis of what exactly it constitutes now, as I go down the my presentation, I would like I'll, I'll I'll differentiate these rights. Now, when I talk about trademarks, we talk about trademark offices where the registration where you can have your trademark registered. In India, there are primarily five offices, and these offices are based in Delhi, Ahmedabad, Mumbai. Chennai and Calcutta. Now, if there is any individual or company who wants to register a trademark, then they have to approach any of these five offices. And the jurisdiction of these offices are dependent upon where the applicant is based or where the address for service of the agent is. 
For example, if somebody is based in northern India, the jurisdiction would lie in Delhi. If someone is based out of Rajasthan and Gujarat, the jurisdiction would lie before Ahmedabad registry. On the western side, it will be Mumbai. Southern, it will be Chennai and eastern Kolkata. So this is how the demarcation of the jurisdiction of trademark offices as is in India. Now, when I talk about trademarks, what exactly constitutes trademark? A trademark is a word mark, a label mark, a shape mark, sound mark, three-dimensional mark, and there are other categories as well, which talks about you know signatures, names. All these can also form as a trademark. And trademark is something a name given to a venture or a product. Basically, this is what the trademark is. Now, trademark application for trademark can be filed on intention to use basis or on actual use basis. That means even if you have not a commercial in a commercial venture, if you have only thought of a trademark to use, you can still have it registered in your name on the basis of proposed use. However, if the mark is already in use, then you can claim that use in the application. Now, once application is given, is filed, it takes around 10 to 12 months for the application to be registered. And once it is registered, its validity, validity lasts for 10 years. Now, the good thing is for any foreign applicants, they can also, or for that matter, Indian applicants as well, they can always claim a priority if they have filed an application six months prior in any convention country. Now, when I talk about convention country, India is a member of the Madrid Agreement, and there are around 124 countries which are member of this convention. And if anybody, and if the applicant has filed in any of these convention countries, they can always come to India and also claim a priority from the convention country, six months. That is, if in today's date, 9th April, somebody files an application from a convention country, they can claim six months back date as a priority date. So this is, a, this is an advantage which is given un, under a convention. Now, what does the trademark office do? When trademark office basically, it searches online databases, it examines the applications, it publishes it in the trademark journal and issues the registration certificates. Now, when I say online searchable database, it is both from the availability point of view and from the scenario where an application is filed and it is assessed on the basis to see if there are any conflicting marks existing on the register. That is when it is formed as a part of the examination of the applications, where the examiner examines it on such basis. And there is another issue of distinctiveness of the marks, which is uh, on which basis the examiner examines the application. Now, if the examination is uh, satisfactory and, and, and if it is, you know, whatever the submissions you are made, uh, to the examination report issued and if it finds favor with the registrar the applications are accepted and then these are published in the trademark journal and thereafter the publication is open for almost four months period of time to file the opposition by any third parties and once there are no oppositions filed the registration certificates are issued and this whole process it takes around 10 to 12 months then when I talk about patents and design offices, when I talk about patents and design offices, there are four offices for patents. These are Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, Calcutta. Again, these are jurisdiction-wise divided. But for design offices, we have only two offices where the applications are accepted, and these are Delhi and Calcutta. Again, the jurisdiction is decided on the basis where the applicant is based and where the address for service is. If it is North India, it will obviously be Delhi. For West, 
and even the Rajasthan and Gujarat will be covered by the Mumbai. For southern it is Chennai and eastern part is Kolkata. For design offices, there are only two offices, design in uh, Delhi and Calcutta. Now, what is a patent? As I told you, there is a difference between the trademark and patents. Now, patent are, are, are something which, which is an invention that is new. It has an inventive step. It has industrial applicability and is not included under any of the the section three uh, exclusions. Now, if whatever invention is there, it can be patented. This is what the basic difference is. A trademark is a name given to a product, whereas a patent is for the invention. Now, what are the exclusions under section three? Section three primarily of the Patents Act, primarily talk about evergreening of the patents, but there are certain exceptions like such as method of treatment diagnosis of human beings plant or animal or any part thereof except microorganisms or biological processes for the production or propagation of plants and animals or any adaptation mere use or new form of new substance uh, or a new use of a non-process would not be patentable for example if there are any uses which are attributed or ascribed to turmeric or neem these are obviously will not be patentable and computer programs are also not patentable per se. However, computer programs, if they are combined with the hardware, then obviously they become a patentable. Now, when I talk about the designs, designs are something which are registered in respect of an article or a or a thing which is very appealing to the eye, it has its own aesthetic value. The, the functional features of the design are a disqualification totally. There should be absolute novelty or originality of design, which is one of the foremost and basic criteria to get a design registration. Again, the priority claim is allowed in designs as well. Now, when I talk about the uh, um, uh, term of the design, it is 10 years plus five years extendable. For a patent, the term of patent is for 20 years. Now, when I talk about copyright, copyright again is classified like such as, there can be a copyright in a literary work, in a musical work, in a dramatic work, or in a cinematographic work. The good thing about these rights, copyright, is that it is not necessary to have a, 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 to to apply and seek a copyright registration. You can always have it without even seeking registration for it. But at the same time, it is recommended to seek a copyright registration because if tomorrow something goes on into the litigation part, it is always to have your. It is always better to have a documented right. And it is for this purpose that we suggest clients to attain copyright. Now, India is a member of the Bern and Universal Your Copyright Convention. And I think there are uh, around 179 members of this convention, which means that if an applicant has obtained right in any of these convention country, then India is bound to recognize those rights in India as well on reciprocity basis. This is what the convention implies, which also means that it is not necessary again to have a separate documented right in India. The courts in India would recognize that copyright registration attained in a convention country. The other issue which, uh, which where the copyright comes into play is the employment contracts where companies you know, enter into employment contracts with their employees by drafting the um, robust employment contracts where anything which is becomes a part of the contract of service becomes the, the property of the employer. Now, these are the terms which it can also be included in the employment contracts. Then if there happens to be any consultancy agreements or assignments 
or or or, or vendor vendor relationships then because it involves a contract for service it is always better to have a specific assignment taken from the uh, parties from uh, from the vendors in favor of the vendor so as to avoid any technicality at a later date so these are the basic rights which i explained uh, now i move on to how to enforce these rights in india now when i talk about enforcement there are certain remedies which are available these are criminal remedy civil actions through court cnd letters cnd is cease and desist letters and negotiations and there are also border control measures which are available to the owners of these rights now when i talk about civil actions now civil action obviously is before the civil courts and it is uh, in terms of the civil procedure code now what happens is that you prepare and file a suit for trademark infringement like for example if it is a trademark infringement you go ahead with the suit for filing the infringement and passing off thereafter the uh, it leads to admission of the case hearing on the ex parte injunction the good thing is that with the suit or the main plaint you can also file an application for ex parte seeking an ex parte injunction thereafter the notice or summons is issued to the defendant if the ex parte injunction motion is not taken care of by the court thereafter once the notice or summons goes to the defendant there is a filing of the reply by the defendant and then the matter is set down for arguments or injunction application and either the injunction is confirmed or injunction refused now this is the process where it goes on to the interim stage thereafter the matter is set down for trial where you have uh, cross examination chief examination of witnesses cross examination of witnesses and then there 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 is the evidence stage which comes into play where all both the parties need to produce the evidence the trial this is how the trial takes place and thereafter the final order all this process generally takes between 5 to 6 7 years it may take even more but it is always better to move an application for the interim interim injunction so that in case an interim injunction is passed which is likely to take between anywhere between 12 to 18 months the uh, if it is passed then it becomes a leverage for the plaintiff to negotiate settlement with the other side now what all can i get under a civil action now under a civil action you can get injunctions you can have a probatory or a mandatory which is uh, then you can have a search and seizure uh, which is like you know where you go on to the defendant's premises uh, along with the court commissioner which is appointed by the court if you move an application for appointment of the court commissioner under order 26 Uh, on that then thereafter it is like um, handover of the goods if the premises if at the premises there are goods you can always you know seize those goods hand over those goods uh, uh, line it line these line up these goods for destruction thereafter you can also account the, the seek damages or accounts of profit which is provided for in the plaint and this is a picture where a court commissioner is appointed where uh, a raid was conducted with the help of the court commissioner on, on a factory which was producing garments counterfeit garments criminal action <clears throat> now when i talk about criminal action criminal action can be uh, can can be assessed in two ways it is like you either go and file a complaint before the magistrate or you directly go through the police obviously if you have to go through the police then uh, 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 a police officer not below the rank of dsp is likely to is 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 bound to take your case up but there is a catch here 
if the complaint is directly to be dealt by police, then they first have to seek the opinion of the registrar under the provisions of Section 1154 of the Trademarks Act, whether to see whether or not there is an infringement. And this is bound to delay the process. So it is always better that you directly go and file a complaint before the magistrate to seek the directions or the orders of search and seizure. And this is, that is where uh, uh, police will assist you in conducting that search and seizure raid. Thereafter, the arrests are made, made and further it leads to thereafter the prosecution takes place. And the final order is passed. Now, what to expect relief when you go before the court with a criminal case? Imprisonment is obviously one of the foremost things, six months to three years, because trademarks uh, violation or IP violation has now become a cognizable offense. That is, there is an imprisonment involved up to three years. There is a fine 50,000 to 2 lakh of rupees. There is enhanced penalty on subsequent convictions if, if the if the counterfeiter or the infringer is like a habitual infringer, then obviously he, he will need to pay more. Then it leads to seizure, forfeiture, destruction of counterfeit goods, material for placing before the magistrate. These are the certain raid photographs which were taken during the raid, which was conducted with the help of police under a criminal action. These are again certain products which included counterfeit garments and shoes. You can see the Adidas representation here, three stripes. Now, the, another process is through customs recordation. What is customs recordation? Now, under the intellectual property rights imported goods enforcement rules, 2007, you can have your IP registered with the customs authorities. The good thing is that you need to file a single application, which is to cover all the 130 ports in India. There is an option which has also been provided for giving the white list to the customs authorities. And these, this white list is primarily the list of authorized importers who are authorized by the owners to bring in products into India. Option is of providing images of counterfeit goods and suspected countries they are likely to originate from. Now, this is the uh, whole process which needs to be followed when it comes to protecting an IP right through border protection. First of all is your registration of an IPR with the uh, customs authorities. And there is, an, uh, there is a website which is provided, icegate.goe.in, where you go and register your IP. You need to provide the details. Once you have provided those details, uh, there is a unique temporary registration number which is issued. Thereafter, once it is issued, you need to submit the hard copies of the documents which is enunciating your rights in the IP. <coughs> Sorry. Now, once, the, uh, once this process is done, then there is an issuance of the a unique permanent registration number, which is termed as UPRN. And this UPRN is effective for a period of five years. Now, once the goods are imported into India and, you know, there is uh, something likelihood that this is something which is counterfeit coming into India, then obviously you need to immediately inform the customs authorities for the suspension of those goods where you need to furnish a bond which is 110 percent of the value of the retained goods for example if you are importing let's say if somebody is going to import 100 rupees worth of goods they need to produce a bond which is 110 rupees and a bank guarantee which is 25 percent of the bond value that is the 110 25 percent of the 110 so this is how you need to assess these are basically taken with a view to, you know, cover the expenses which are going to be incurred by the customs authorities. Thereafter, there is a, uh, if the products are found to be original, 
then these are they are released and if they are found to be counterfeit they are destroyed or consignment after updating with no objection from the rights holders so this is the whole process how the border protection works and here i end my um, presentation this gave you an outline of how the ipr what are the iprs main iprs in india and how the enforcement scenario works in india over to you mega thank you so much sir thank you for the wonderful presentation so uh, sir we can move towards the question answer round sure i would like to request uh, each and every one if uh, anyone have any questions they can just write it in the inbox or they can ask uh, them by one the house is open for the question answer round or we can uh, just move towards to dr sanjeev like sir executive secretary last me if you want to speak on something uh, with uh, in conversation with dr uh, like rajiv sir yes uh, mr rajiv uh, you have already explained uh, in a better manner about the uh, intellectual property <coughs> sorry in enforcement this is very important for msmes as you are aware of that msmes are the backbone of our economy and they are contributing to 30% of the gdp generating 70 to 80% of the employment and whenever we are just talking about the msme 99% in india so 99% out of this 99% 98% are the micro having turnover uh, means 5 crores now they are generating a huge number of employment over here and 6.33 crores uh, msmes are there formal 1.5 crores they have got the msme certification now my question is uh, how uh, this this micro our target is the micro because micro are the 98% and uh, when we are talking about the small 0.63 and the medium point 0.33% so micros are, uh, are the one they are just uh, uh, means uh, uh, formulating the backbone of our economy and our prime minister already target of uh, 5 billion trillion sorry 5 trillion economy so how this ipr will be beneficial for this micro section thank is you so much is it necessary to have the ipr because of uh, as, uh, as vegetable seller or any small manufacturer is it is it possible and how they can access to uh, get registered at the door step this is the uh, major challenge for msmes the micro ones yes Uh, thank you, Mr. Agarwal. Uh, you asked me this question, and um, I would like to say here that because these IP rights form the backbone of any commercial venture, so it is very much recommended that any business which is started off and which falls within this category of MSMEs, they also have their IP rights. registered now in this regard the government is very proactive they have set up a spe specific uh, they have this made in india campaign which has been running running since the government came into place they have made changes and they have introduced certain things which favor msmes a lot for example if somebody files msme wants to file a trademark application or for that matter even the patent or copyright any ip right they want to seek the registration then there is a cut in the official fees which has been provided by the uh, government for example in trademarks let's say a normal applicant company 
is required to you know pay around 9000 rupees for filing an application trademark application but for a msme it has been reduced to 4500 rupees half and the other aspect which is there is the government of india has introduced the list of trademark and patent facilitators on the website and uh, the, uh, the you can they, they have a list of about around 400 odd even more than that facilitators whom the msmes can approach and seek their assistance in having their ip rights registered and the best part msmes do not have to pay even a single rupee to the trademark or patent facilitators this is taken care of by the government although it is very minimal but then msmes only need to pay the official fees so this is a very good step which has been taken by the government of india to encourage msmes and to encourage the innovation of in this small scale sector wonderful sir uh, uh, you are very much aware of that uh, uh, means most of the government schemes they are not reaching out to the target audience or the targeted audience uh, effectively i had the opportunity to meet sri piyush goel ji last year mm -hmm. and he uh, means deliberately means uh, asked me what are the challenges the msmes are facing i categorically told the three challenges one is the hand holding another is the whatever the government schemes are there they are not aware of uh, these schemes and they are the single owner the third one is the single owner they are the owner they are the peon everything marketing manager sales manager and every finance manager so the the thing is that they do, they do have the uh, good quality products but they do not have the access to the market and they do not know how to market their product their marketing skill because this covid has already disrupted our life as well as businesses and msmes in micro are the major hit so can we uh, uh, reach out to them uh, to their door step or you can just organize any kind of camp here at wasme we are located in film city noida so that we can invite them to get their uh, registration here we can organize can we because you are yes, really active in this ip as uh, uh, means uh, ip registration and all we can collaborate and we can have a uh, I means one camp so that we can invite them for registration because they do not have any idea how to register how to have a uh, I means avail the schemes and all yes sir yes definitely we can definitely collaborate on this and it is like you know um, it is through seminars like this uh, that we can we can you know uh, prop uh, propagate the schemes of the government which are there which are to help the msmes and small scale sector enterprises um, and we can educate them and make them aware of their you know how they can seek protection for their ipr so this is this is one of the ways where we organize these seminars for them educate them on these issues and thereafter you know uh, make them uh, make these schemes of the government which have been introduced as approachable and you know accessible to uh, these uh, msmes yeah wonderful so we can also uh, uh, take uh, msme ministry on board and you you people will be their rna and wasme we can collaborate and we can organize such a type of camp so that the micro one can get benefited yes definitely we can do that together wonderful yes over to mega thank you sir thank you so much thank you rajiv sir for explaining so well thank you dr layak uh, let's move towards other question there is one question from abhi tripathi ji 
what are the what are the steps uh, like i was telling you the questions of how register is research as a patent uh, what are the steps for a beginner basically they want to ask uh, sorry what are the steps what, what are the steps for the but for a beginner for a beginner research as a patent see it depends which field they are going to be in and uh, obviously um, if there is any innovative idea which they have and if they have any any expertise in that and and, and they can you know uh, go into a material form of 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 inventing something then obviously Uh, they can approach the ipr attorneys to whom you know they can give their indication or give their specification to see if their idea or innovation would be a patentable um uh, you know uh, whether or not it will be uh, patentable under the patent act so for this obviously they first need to develop that idea into a material form or innovation and then proceed further on to it thank you for your answer sir uh, he might have received the answer uh, if you want to ask something he can ask who is open for the questions so let's move towards the other questions from mr harish harish uh, is there a process for review what is patentable in india on frequent basis as changes law of nature and over a period of time a lot of changes in technology and other requirements are happening see uh, there is a process like i said that uh, if there is any ever greening of the patent then what it means is that if there is already a technology which is there and you are just improving upon that technology and which is in effect is just an improvement and nothing more inventive step in, involved in that technology then obviously it will not be patentable but yes if there is something which is uh, which there is a technology but you have not only upgraded it but there is a, a a totally altogether a fresh inventive step involved in it then it becomes a patentable technology and it will be out of the preview of section 3 exclusions which i discussed earlier so this is this all depends how the technology has been you know developed and upgraded or innovation upgraded if it involves uh, altogether uh, an inventive step then obviously it becomes a patentable and moves out of the section 3 exclusion exclusions thank you for your answer sir uh, might be receive his answer so uh, let's we don't have any question now any more so we let's move towards the vote of thanks i on behalf of world association for small and medium enterprises it's a great honor to propose the vote of thanks to all guest speakers participants and vastnity i would like to thank our distinguished speaker mr rajiv suri for making excellent presentation and making this i would like to express a true form gratitude to mr shabnam khan for his presence in this webinar I would also like to thank our Secretary General Dr. Jyoti Prakashal and Executive Secretary Vasne for his continuous guidance, for his support and guidance. Once again, thank you all of you for making this webinar successful with your contribution. Thank you, everyone, and I would like to request if there is anyone they can collect the copy, the link, the feedback form from the inbox. Thank you, Rajiv sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Agarwal. Thank you, Ashmi, for giving this opportunity, and thank you, audience, for being here and patiently listening. Thank you so much. Thank you.
अरे तो तुम्हें पसंद करा पहले उनका बिगड़ी बने चिल्ला चिल्ला करे पचास पचास उठाओ तो आप पचास उधर चला वो यही सब गंडे बोल मालूम है आप समझे आप समझ लोगों को बोल देंगे